Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1060, Trigonometry for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. Lecture 11 is going to continue our discussion of graph transformations of sine and cosine. In this video, I want to talk about transforming functions by shifting. That is to say, if we were to translate a graph up, down, left, right, how do you do that algebraically? Well, the general principle is if you have some function f of x and you have some positive number c, what have you, then y equals f of x plus c is the same graph, but everything's been shifted up by a factor of c. Uh, and so adding c to the function moves everything in the picture up. Uh, conversely, if you subtract c from the function, that actually causes everything to move down, vertically shifting it down by a factor of c. So how might this affect a sine or cosine wave? Well, if you were to look at y equals cosine of x plus 2, notice the plus 2 is outside of the cosine. That means you take your standard cosine, which you can see right here, and everything is going to be moved up by two points exactly. So looking at the five important points, the five special points on the graph right here, these coincide with the quadrantal angles, 0 pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. The original y coordinates are 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. Now, if we move everything up by 2, then 0, 1 is going to move up to become 0, 3. And pi halves, 0 is going to be move, moving up to becoming, uh, in this case, pi halves, 2. We added 2 to everything. Negative 1 is the y-coordinate here. We move it up by 2. Its y-coordinate then becomes 1. Um, this one, the y-coordinate 0, it's an x-intercept. It moves up to become 2. And then lastly, the 2 pi, at 2 pi, the y-coordinate is 1. It's going to move up to this value 3. All right? And so when it comes to a sine or cosine wave, it's very important to pay attention to the so-called midline. Uh, this midline is the average value of the function. And for an unshifted uh, sine or cosine wave, this midline will coincide with the x-axis. But because we shifted everything up by a factor of c, in this case specifically shifted up by 2, this midline gets moved up as well. And so the whole midline moves up by a factor of 2. And so the midline is now at y equals 2. And so this kind of acts like the x-axis did for the standard cosine wave. This function will oscillate up and down, up and down, averaging at this midline. And the midline is given by the vertical shift. If you move the graph up or down, the amount you move it up or down is where the midline will exist, y equals c in that situation. That's if you want to move things up and down. What if you want to move things left and right? Well, to move things left and right, that's a horizontal shift, and that requires you do things in the horizontal zone. Do, 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 do. So again, we have our function f, and we want to shift it left or right by a factor of c, or by c units, I should say. In which case, to accomplish that, you are going to take the function and put inside of it x minus c. You replace the variable x with x minus c, and this causes the graph to shift horizontally to the right. So subtracting c from the x coordinate actually moves everything to the right. Consequently, if you take y equals f of x plus c, the plus c inside the horizontal zone causes the graph to move horizontally to the left. So subtracting from the x actually moves it to the right, and adding to the x actually moves it to the left. Like I've warned you before in this lecture series, in the horizontal zone, things act backwards to what you might expect. But think of it this way. Um, if you think of your variable x as time, imagine you're racing your little brother, right? In which case, he probably needs a head start. Uh, and so you let him start sooner. Another way of doing it is you sort of handicap it by subtracting, you know, oh, I'll give you a 10 second handicap. So like maybe if you're in golf, right, you could subtract some of your strokes. Uh, you, you're basically taking away to kind of speed it up, actually. So subtracting C from the time is as if you had started the race sooner. Or I, I should say it's like you started farther down the track um, because of this, this head start that you're giving. So if you want to graph the function y equals cosine of x minus pi force, the standard cosine wave you see right here, no transformations whatsoever, the fact that you have this negative pi force means you're going to take your picture and you're going to move it to the right by a factor of pi force. So look at these points right here. So you have 
uh, 0, 1, pi half 0, pi negative 1, 3 pi half 0, and uh, the last one here, of course, 2 pi 1. If you move each and every one of these points uh, by a pi fourth step, you're going to get something like this. This point moves here, this point moves here, this point moves here, this point moves here, and then this point would move all well off the screen. So you'll have to accept that. And so you get these things. Everything got moved to the right by, a, by this pi fourths unit right like so and so shifting everything to the right is what we get with this x minus pi force if you had an x plus pi force this would actually cause everything on the graph to shift to the left and so it's important to look out for these things when it comes to uh horizontal or vertical shifts up down left right